Hey guys and gals, it's Mike White with 143. So today, I'm going to show you how to reconstruct a, a graphic. And I've already worked on this, you know, for the last hour or so. But I've got uh, this graphic, and it was given to me as in one piece. Um, you know, all layered together, just as a PNG file. And it had some problems, it was very messy. Um, and I needed to repaint sections. And, you know, I, I needed to try to work really hard because I'm going to try to convert this into an SVG so that we can easily change the colors and don't get me wrong we could change the colors right here in Adobe Photoshop but I'm going to try to make this a foolproof perfect uh, any size SVG because the graphic is just screaming for that that's what I say when I look at this this is this is intended to be an SVG so um, you know the first thing that I did was I needed to separate the layers so I had these two layers and this one attached to this one. So what that means um, is that I needed to actually reconstruct this layer. And so, you know, I've actually built the parts that, that overlap. And that's necessary if you want really high quality. I mean, if you're if you're looking for just a quick fix, you know, you could cut these and you'll you might see a little gap there when you convert this to an SVG. But if you want it to be um, solid, you know, and, and look good, uh, real good, then you're going to have to reconstruct uh, parts of what goes be below. So I'm just going to show you real quickly, you know, what I've done. And so you can see um, this is a separate layer here in Photoshop now. And I've just painted behind that layer and tried to fill in because I don't want any like, you know, confusion or, or gaps or problems. Um, and I've left this little section here because I've actually screwed this up and done this wrong. So I'm going to show you, uh, I think that this is supposed to come straight up, you know, like this D does. And I just decided that, uh, you know, after looking at the bottom here, why would this go angle? And that's how I painted it. So I'm just going to get rid of that. So let's just cut this guy off and hit delete. And then to fix this, I'm going to take a clean section up here. And I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to clean up a lot right in this area. I've done so much of this already on this graphic. Uh, but this section I knew that I'd left uh, so I could show you guys. All right, so let's just delete this little piece because that looks wrong. And then let's just use that same marquee tool. This is a clean section that I already drew. And I'm just going to paste that. I just control C and then control uh, shift V to paste in place. And I'm just going to slide this down. And if you want to, you can get way in here and make sure it's perfect. And, you know, I know that I'm doing a better job than what I was given. And that's all that I really care about here. I'm just trying to improve the quality. So now that I've extended that down, I'm just going to hit Control E to merge it. And then I'm going to grab a piece of this. And I'm just going to scoot it over. You know, graphics just get distorted through all the trials and tribulations that they go through. I feel bad for them sometimes. Uh, you know, it's just like they're, they're so, they're so, they struggle so hard. They're, they're beat up uh, by the universe. Um, and so, you know, as, as things get changed, um, you know, screenshots, uh, you know, export, uh, different imports, you know, just different graphics programs, uh, messing with them. Uh, that, that's what, that's what causes things to get messy and kind of screw up. So, you know, what we can do to fix it is we can just come in here and try to, you know, restore order to the chaos. And, you know, look at that. That's just so off. And I guess this whole letter is actually tilted. And, and you know, I was going to try to uh, to fix that right through there. And I'm still going to do something to, to address it because you can tell that it's wavy. Um, so let's just grab a brush. And we're going to use my favorite technique, which I call paint behind. We'll paint behind the layer. And, you know, it doesn't matter what color we use because we're going to put a color overlay anyway. But let's just use orange because it makes the most sense. And see, that's just kind of beefed that up um, and kind of fixed that edge. And I say kind of because it's, it's, it's far from perfect. We can do the same thing here. The same thing here. And you could do this for hours, you know. And, and I recommend you do if it's your own artwork. If you're doing something for a client... Uh, you got to be quick because time is money. So, um, you know, just, just do, just do something that's passing and move on. You know, that's the thing to do. So we're just going to try to get a passing result here 
and we're just straightening up these these edges and trying to give a little consistency to these lines. So that should help that just a bit. Just feels thin in there. So we were just going to, you know, once once you, if you do good, then you got to keep doing good, right? That's the way it goes. So the better you do, the more they expect. That's what uh, my best friend always tells me. All right, so that's that. And so we're just going to finalize this and we're going to merge this down so all of our stuff is on there and then we're going to do a color overlay and we're going to do black um, and here's the uh, the text and that's also going to have a black color overlay so this is our whole outline and really don't like that I'm seeing no okay I'm not seeing that that's actually gone all right, so this is our image size. We're looking at 5,600 pixels. So um, we want detail and we want sharp edges. So we can't go too small, but we don't want all the little uh, inconsistencies. And so finding a happy medium on the size that you shrink down to before you trace is really important. Uh, and so I'm thinking in this instance, I'm going to go about half and I don't know where I come up with these things. You know, I'm looking at the detail of the graphic. I have a lot of experience. And, you know, I just know that if I go to probably about 2,500 pixels, um, I'm going to get the quality that I need and maybe lose a little bit of the, of the problems. You know, when, when we trace this, we don't want it to find all these little inconsistencies. And that's another thing. This is so subjective because... You know this graphic uh, is is this graphic and so it's going to look different um, than anything else you know this is your first time working with this graphic and you're trying to make it as good as possible so uh, there's no number here that I can just tell you um, I'm feeling 2000 and I'm, I'm, I'm scared because I don't want to lose um, you know details and a detail would be like the separation between these two. So I'm gonna go with 2,500. That's my size. And then you'll probably see me do this in previous videos. I'm just gonna export uh, these three layers separately and uh, and make sure that, and you know, name them appropriately. So I won't, uh, I'll spare you that part. Okay, so now we're over in Inkscape and everything's fitted together and it's stacked up. And you can see that we've got um, our text on the top and then we've got our panther, and then we've got our pride. Okay, so now I've traced all those objects and I've got them all lined up and named. So I'm just gonna finally do what I promised you I'd do and show you how to recolor things in Inkscape. So um, I'm titling this video, Recoloring in Inkscape, and we haven't done any of that yet. But that was the point of the exercise as we were coming in to uh, recolor something in Inkscape. Um, Oh, that's not my original. Let me get rid of that. Uh, we were going to recolor um, this graphic. I mean, that was the the job was, you know, take this and convert it uh, and, and paint this white. And this, this interior, uh, the letters are supposed to be alpha. So they're supposed to be transparent. And so what we're going to do is just color it. So now that we've got this separated, we can literally just click here and then click on fill and stroke and then just select the color from the original. I'm going to try to select that text and I'm just going to make it white. And then the default in Inkscape for anything that's traced is just black. So, you know, this fill is black and don't need to change that. So that, that part is done. Now, if I needed to, I'm going to save this as this. This is the default. This is the original. But if I need to now and I want to just change this to white, I'm literally just going to select it and change it to white. And then that text, I don't want it to show through on the white version. I'm just going to knock it out, you know, hit the eyeball on it. And then you can save this as an SVG and this will go right up into the layout designer and print just like this and at any size. That's the beautiful thing about an SVG. All right. Well, I hope you learned something about recoloring in Inkscape, even if the recoloring part was just the last minute. Have a great day. Enjoy.